Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Heretics United. Uh, it is uh, April the 22nd, and we have with us today uh, Fred Gangstead. Um, Fred uh, was uh, is 67, born in California, and has uh, been living in Houston, Texas for 45 years. Uh, son of a black book engineer, I'd love to know what that means, involved in space programs since the 1960s. Lifelong space enthusiast with no formal education in math or physics, never behaved, uh, never believed in the Big Bang, and has spent the last 23 plus years discovering the electric plasma universe, and with the help of like-minded people, hopes to expand uh, our knowledge and understanding. Is that pretty good? Uh, anything you'd like to add to that? Well, I guess I'll add as we go along. I mean, uh... Uh, Jakob, hello, how you doing? You mentioned something about not wanting to start a whole new universe. <laughs> but what I have here is actually uh, everything in astronomy is wrong, going back a thousand years to a star exploding. First time um, somebody looked up a star exploding, they thought it was a star. 900 years later, they find galaxies. And nobody ever put that into the equation. Uh, uh, Fred, would you like me to start you off with, uh, I can show the... Uh... Uh, your um, let me uh, uh, bring it up on the screen here. The Grand Unified Theory. I can walk you through it. Uh, uh, the, the, this this one right here. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's play. Let's play it, and uh, and then we'll talk afterwards. It's only two minutes and something. Let me go Basically, back to what I'm saying is, uh, I take all the planets. Space is in two parts. There's areas oh. of space surrounding the electromagnetic fields that surround the galaxies. And outside of that is nothing but antimatter. Now, okay, uh, those let's Not do it eggs, like let, let's do it like this, Fred. I'm just going to pause it, so uh, yeah, you pause know, it right there. and uh, so you can talk about that. You just say next, and I'll just move along. All right. Uh, I wish I had a picture with, cos a picture with cosmic background. We've all seen it. So we know. <laughs> so look at look at that bottom picture there behind below the galaxies. They look like bubbles in space. You see that? You're looking at areas inside the bubbles and area outside the bubble. Two areas in space completely. Inside the bubble, we all know that stars plasma requires an electromagnetic field. That requires a source of power, and there is no electromagnetic field that could cover all of space. I mean, you can argue that till you turn blue in the face. Doesn't make any sense. But in my picture, each of these galaxies goes through an evolution. There is no different galaxy. It's just in a different stage of the evolution. They start out as a mother rock, which was start out as a quasar being ejected from a large galaxy. Like I talked with Hal Narp, Tip Harp. Mother rock uh, is the same as a parent galaxy and child. And the parent so, so uh, Frank. How are, you, how are you saying that the galaxy starts off? It's, it's a cycle. It's kind of hard to start anywhere. Okay. So I start with the formation of the mother rock. Kind of like chicken and, and egg. The, pardon? It's kind of like the chicken and the egg. There really is no... You're, you're not addressing an actual start of the galaxy. It's just okay. a, 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 a repeating process. I have some pictures in there that shows how it goes through this process. But you literally... You have a galaxy full of trillions of planets. And all these planets are circling the galaxy. You ever seen one M104, the Sombrero Galaxy? Looks like a ring around it. Mm -hmm. Picture that ring around a galaxy is nothing but planets, not dust. As it's circling and rotating, it shrinks. It gets smaller and smaller as this big ring of planets shrinks down. The do, you see a, do you see a distinction between the spiral galaxies and... And the, the spherical, uh, you know, the, um, what do they call no, that, the no. oblate galaxies? It goes from a mother rock to a, spy, to a barred spiral, where the plasma jets are blown out both ends. Then it starts to spin. It spins and makes a large spiral. Then it will turn into an elliptical surrounded by planets and recycle itself again. Shall I move on to the next uh, set of images? If you all understand that part, yeah, go on to the next one. Okay. I got something for Yakovo. There oh, we go. There's the spiral galaxy. There's the Sombrero galaxy. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it, it said it. Bear with me, Yakov. You, you'll see it afterwards. Okay, you want me to continue on to the next one? No, let's take this picture right here. You see the M104 where it has a dust ring around it? Mm -hmm. That's not dust. Those are planets. Yeah. Okay. Picture that ring of planets shrinking. Because of gravity, it's going to pull itself in and shrink. Have you seen a, a progression of that? Uh, uh, have you set a pictures of the progression, Fred, in um, in your yes. collection? Yes. Uh. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I know you had we had trouble uh, uh, showing because it, it looked kind of blurred. Actually, your background looks pretty good at this distance. Eh? Oh, I know what's wrong, Fred. Fred, you've got the blur on, haven't you? Uh, blur background. I don't even know what the blur is. Yeah, it's uh, well. Let's not worry about that. Let, let, let's uh, let's move with the uh, the images you have on your uh, uh, on your uh, um, uh, on your video. Uh, shall I move on from this one to the next image, Fred? Yeah, go ahead. I don't have the sound on. Um, I'm just basically there, there, uh, is, there is no there is no sound. Yeah, right, right. Well, I, I made this that. using Windows Movie Maker back in about 13, 14 years ago. <laughs> That's what I'm working on now is trying to get somebody who knows how to put some quality graphics in this, kind of like what uh, Chris's videos look like. And I mean, oh, with, uh, shall I go through this one uh, here? The, yeah, uh, go ahead. See, go. How, see how this ring shrinks down. Y'all following that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me do it again. It's a giant globe with a hole through the center. Okay, let me do that the again. The hole never closes. It's gonna, I, I kind of got repeats in this back and forth, but you see how that turns into a big old rock with yeah, a hole okay. through the center of it? One more time, it'll do it. I'm. You go on to the next one. Now, this is where the bubbles come into effect. Because outside of the uh, electromagnetic field we're in is antimatter. You know, physicists for years have theorized that there's equal parts matter and antimatter in the universe. And it's out there. We just can't see it because it's outside of the bubble that we're in. That bubble acts like a dome and reflects images. The layers that make up this bubble to reflect images. And that's what this is all about, is all the reflections in the sky that I can point out to you. All the supernova, all the nova and everything else are actually birth of galaxies. Stars never explode. There are no blue giants, red giants, all that. They're all reflections on these layers. So uh, this cloud of antimatter that surrounds the uh, galaxy, does this inhibit uh, our, our uh, does it distort what we're seeing in the deep field as we look outside of our galaxy? Yes. All those uh, pictures they call, they say are uh, gravitational lensing and shit, that's bullshit. Yeah, all I wasn't thinking. By the layers that are reflections. Yeah, I wasn't There's thinking like that far away. One. I was thinking more like just a local group of galaxies. Is that a distortion due to the, uh, uh, like if you're, we would obviously be within looking through this antimatter uh, cloud, right? Uh, would that is that causing us to see a distortion? The layer itself. Go ahead, go a little further. This is a mother rock. This is a process. A giant rock the size of a solar system or larger, containing all the planets in the galaxy. As this forms into this rock, it makes a magnetic trap in the Oops. center. Sorry. Then it's uh, coming to the edge of the bubble and getting antimatter. Let me go through that process again. Okay. This big old spinning rock nozzles up. This is a quasar. 
This is a quasar. I've been giving birth from a. So, uh, what? What is the black thing right here? What is the what? What is it we're looking at here? That's the antimatter. I call it anti-hydrogen, but it's the same thing. Okay, uh, and this is the uh, and this is the, uh, the mother rock. Uh, uh, and, the is that what is it in scale? Is it size of a planet? A couple or? times the size of a solar system. A couple of okay, so big rock. Yes, very big. What? That's where what, I got. You know, you know where I got the name Mother Rock from? The first is this, time I discovered this thing, hmm? I said that's one motherfucking big ass rock. <laughs> is uh, it, now if it's all rock, it, is it um, is it emanating uh, radiation? I mean, if you got that much rock, right? The I mean, you look at the our Earth. I mean, you dig down. Into, you know, into the ground just gets warmer. Would this would this be uh, this? Would it be hot inside the rock? Uh, Not until it gets to antimatter. It's cold going in because it's just a huge ring of planets. And because of the gravity is in the mass of the ring, the center is anti-gravity. So it's very so loo it's very loose. Uh, so it doesn't. Um, it doesn't radiate at this point? At this point, it's not really giving off any kind of a signal. Okay, you so know, not, even, no not even an infrared at this point? Uh, there might be infrared. I mean, I've seen pictures. I have pictures of this thing. I just showed you a picture of it in Orion. Yeah, yeah. This, this is what I'm here to say. The sword in Orion is a new mother rock, is a new galaxy. The stars well, in the belt are reflections of that. Okay, I'll put, let me play this. I'll play this along again here. All right. Get a charge of antimatter deep inside this giant rock. Now, when that antimatter, when it gets enough of it, it's like filling up a gas tank. It contacts mass and explodes. Boom. And uh, when, uh, where would... That's a Nova. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so at that's this point, it goes, it's a Nova. Okay, good, good. Yes. Now, in some cases, you're going to see a reflection on it, on a layer behind it. You follow me so far? Uh huh. There you go. Ada Carina. It's not a flat polar star. That's a new galaxy. The left side is the galaxy. The right side is a reflection. Um, what is the scale of the um, of the uh, of this event in relation to the size of, say, the Milky Way? It is what starts a galaxy. The scale so I can so, show you. Okay, so I it starts you very. Okay, so it starts very small. Yeah. Right now, now, now um, this uh, this event, if I'm not mistaken, this this takes place inside our galaxy. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Right on the edge on. of the galaxy, edge of the bubble. Okay, let me go on here. I can follow the energy trail from large, small Magellanic clouds through Orion, through the Crab Nebula, Triffid, Eta Carina, and all of them, and show how each of these were spawned from this large galaxy, the Milky Way. So here, we have the first plasma jet, here we got the first plasma jet blown out one side. Of of the okay. of the rock. Yeah. Okay. Um uh so are you saying that the Milky Way is like spawning uh galaxies? Yes. Okay. The dwarf galaxies surrounding the Milky Way were spawned by the Milky Way. So, like the large Magellanic cloud uh, would be uh, yes. would be an example of that. Exactly. And so here we come to a point where it's now both sides are just going out now, both sides. Okay. That goes straight out. That forms a barred spiral. You see that? Yeah. Now this rock is spinning real fast doing this. Yeah, yeah. So gyroscopic action causes it to start start to turn sideways. What? 
the guy that's saying forms a spiral galaxy. Yeah, bar galaxy to a spiral. There you go. 99% of the spiral galaxies you find have two arms coming out of them, one on either side. Now you notice a dark trail coming out behind the plasma. I also remember you, uh, I don't know if it's on this video here, it might be on another one, where uh, you show that really wonderful uh, image of the center of the galaxy with these, you know, what appears to best be described as lateral cracks running down the... Uh, the, the interior of the uh, of the center of the galaxy, which fascinating image. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's blurring because because you've got um, yeah okay. I'll see if I can hunt that one down online. Um, but yeah, that picture. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the uh, the center of the galaxy. Uh, I. I Think it's taken in in a very far ultraviolet to X ray, if I'm not mistaken. It's a combination. It's, not, it's, a, it's a composite of different yeah, photographs. Right, right. I'll continue with yours here. Yeah. See how this turns into spiral galaxy. Now we're going to zoom on into this thing once it's formed this position, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get up close to the rock and see what's happening here. As it's turned sideways, that plasma just starts blowing over the rock. You see what happens? What's right there, the, uh, the what's the, right uh, what's the turquoise areas? Those are planets. Oh, okay. Those are planets, stars, gaseous planets, solid planets, moons, all of them. This plasma jet is building a galaxy in one move. So it's basically just spewing out every every which size you could possibly desire, from yep. from uh, uh, and including globular clusters at this point, including all of it, everything. Uh, where do the uh, at what point do the globular clusters start forming? Well. Globular clusters don't even exist. Oh, so this is early on. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Yeah, no. A lot of the stars we see, globular clusters and all this and that, those are reflections. This bubble that I described to you that we're inside of? Uh-huh. It's got layers in it. Here's a... Uh, go on over to that last video there on the top row. This there one here? Go. There you go. Bring that one up. Okay, oh, there's the picture of the mother rock I drew 20 years ago. All right? And that right there in that picture oh, that I yeah, told yeah. you. Oh, 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 sorry. There's the, uh, in the background right there, there's the right cracks. There. Okay. You see the plasma jets on either side of this? Yeah. Right? Okay. Take your pointer and put it right there at the tip of where my pen is. Up a little bit more, to, a little bit more to left. A little bit more, left, this left, way? left, right there. That is the mother rock. That round shape right there in the center of it, it's spewing out a plasma jet on the right side, facing toward us, and the plasma jet on the other side is going away. This rock is spinning away from us. Now those lines that look like electric arcs going around that center part there. Uh -huh. Where's your pointer at? Bring it over to them solid lines going up and down. I'll, uh, I'll, file. I'll move this thing forward here. Okay, right there, right there where I'm holding the pen at. That straight line going up and down. This one here? Yeah. What's this one? That's electrical. That's a magnetic electrical field surrounding outside of it. Now, right where the pen is, you see some round arches. These things here? See that? Yeah. You know what a torus looks like? Yeah. That's a torus. That's an electromagnetic torus surrounding the mother rock right there. That torus is spinning two directions. So, now, that's a picture of Orion. That's the one I just showed you. Uh-huh. That's uh, from my monolayer uh, telescope. On the top is a plasma, a big old cloud of plasma. They don't know what it is. 
Okay, bring it right there, right there, right there. Hold it right there. That is the mother rock. Right? That is what creates galaxies. So this being in the center of our galaxy, this is in turn spewing out these uh, mother rocks. This, this, this is in Orion. This is a sword nebula in Orion. This right. came from the mother rock in our galaxy. They spew out little areas, little planet rings that turn into mother rocks on their own. Okay. This is what so I the, call a baby rock. It so only these, has one plasma set. So these are in the process of being ejected from the, the galaxy? From no, the this, Milky Way? Is, it's going to make its own galaxy in the same bubble as the Milky Way. Okay. Kind of like the Magellanic uh, going around in a circle. Uh, sort of like the Magellanic uh, cloud? Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, look, I'm going to show you that plasma jet right there at the top. Keep it going. There, I'm going to bring it over to that. Okay, hold it right there. That's the same plasma cloud. In infrared, you see all the little roll round little anomalies they call them. Mm -hmm. You see all the little round spots in there. Those yeah. are stars. Those are stars being born from that cloud of plasma. You're saying you that these the little, you're saying that these little dots here are actually not a not a uh, uh, an effect of the of the film, but are actually part of the of the um, of the image? That's correct. If you take and overlay that picture with those dots, which is what I've done, put that picture on top of that plasma jet in the main picture, each one of those little spots matches a star in the main picture. Okay, so they kind so of block those, them out. Are these are sort of blocked out? Is that what... Is well, this? The, infrared, the infrared is blocking out the bright light from those little stars, and so you can see the plasma behind it. Okay. Okay. Right? But if you uh right up there at the top of it, see that plasma jet I just pointed to? Uh huh. Right there below my pen. Right there below the tip of my pen, there are four stars almost like a horseshoe shape. Let's see. Where's your where's your pointer at? You got up there. Okay, you got your pointer right there where I'm pointing at. Those four stars right there, can you see them? Yeah. Not the trapezium. Really, you got your little pointer? Uh-huh. Bring it on up there. Uh, around here? Okay, or, a little or, bit more to the left. Or right here. There you were just, uh, oh, no, not those. Right there, right there. Up. Up. These. Right there, those four. Oh, okay. See that? Uh-huh. Now go back to that other picture. Uh, the previous one? Yeah. Okay, where's your pointer? So it's these hit right here? Down, 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 down. Oh, down. Hang, hang on a second. Some more. Hang on, uh, let me uh, get my... Okay, hold the picture. Right there? Bring your, pointer. Bring your pointer down. Come on down a little bit more. Oh, my pointer? Down okay, hey, be quiet. Get down yeah? to the bottom. One. Come on down. Where Further down? Down here? Here you go. Just to the left. To the, to the, the left. Uh, to my, over here? Right there. Right there. Uh -huh. See those four shapes right there? Uh -huh. Those right there. Those are the four stars I just pointed out to you in the main picture. Oh, oh okay. Oh, great. Okay. Right. Okay, now look back. Now go on and look at the main one. See those four stars right there above the trapezium that I pointed out? Uh huh. Yeah. That's them. Okay. Those are actual stars. The, first, the trapezium stars, on, a, on the other hand, aren't real. Now there, freeze that right there if you can. My finger is pointing at the center of our galaxy. There's the mother rock, and above it is the plasma jet coming from the rock. Going this way? That? Shooting right up there. this way? Yeah, it's shooting up there right there. The, you're going right past the plasma jet. Right. There, uh -huh. that's the plasma. See it to the left in the other picture? Uh, yeah, uh, are you mean here? That's the plasma. 
And right below it is the mother rock. Right there? Right in line where my finger is. The line of the... Yeah. That's the mother rock in both pictures. And above it is the plasma jet producing stars. Okay. I'll uh, move on. So now what I'm showing you is nebula are new galaxies. The same mechanism that... Oops, in fact, sorry. they're finding these dust and nebulas all over the place now. Um, is there another video you'd like to show? Oh, geez, all of them. I don't know. Well, well, well hold on. Move up. Move over a little bit. Right, that, this right one? Right there. That one? Just want to show that picture right there. This one? Uh, let's see. I'm waiting to see. I can't see nothing. There oh, we go. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, let me back off a little bit. Uh, okay. Oh, that's Halton Arp. That's the emails with uh, Halton Arp. I knew Chip Arp. I sent him a message in about 2000, and we got to communicating back and forth for about five years. I got emails from him. Oh, that's he great. Understood, he understood my mother rock issue, and I helped him with his. His issue was he was trying to figure out how these quasars were being born as right. twins from galaxies. Right, uh, and the spectral uh, readouts are completely different from the uh, central object exactly. uh, to the jets, which so throws into the faster. Yeah, thro throws and into question how reliable, how much you can rely on a cosmic um, uh, redshift. And at least in that, well, so, and, in and, that and I think if I can just uh, interject just for a second, because you're down that path already. I think the important part here is another voice that wants to question some of the mm, primary and major assumptions of our current astronomy, right? Right. And it's not new questions, and it's not even new theories. Many of these things have come out through the last century and a half, right? And Fred is just another one of those voices, uh, just like the ether is, that wants science to go back and science insists not to. This is the same with everyone that's been questioning whether at least the version of the Big Bang model that we've been presented with for the past 50 years, whether that actually makes sense. And then we get a new telescope and we start seeing things that literally uh, mm, becomes outliers, right? Th this does not fit with your model, mate. So now a lot of strong uh, uh, protesters are going, can we go back to uh, to, to, to the original premises and, and, and see if it, it actually makes sense, right? So how did we come about uh, things like uh, the limitation of the speed of light? Why Why is that a limitation? Well, it's a limitation if you understand it through the lens of um, uh, Einstein's uh, theory and uh, his equations. But even he said, well, it's not really a limitation. It's just from from what it seems to do, it's I, I keep comparing it to uh, a higher ver dimensional version or higher higher uh, scale version of the speed of sound in air. Well, how do you move through any sort of uh, limitational medium? And uh, you, you're comparing all of your notes based on effectively hearing sound. Well, I'm hearing sound and it's moving at the speed of sound. Yes, mate, we know. Like, that's the same. That the, when you're looking at light with light-sensitive or EM-sensitive <laughs> Uh, uh, sensors, right? You're going to see something that moves at the speed of sound. <laughs> so your your argument is just still circular, and then it's the whole thing of how would you even start detecting anything that's moving uh, faster than the speed of light? So, so basically, uh, uh, Jakob, what you're pointing out is the limitation of of we live in a local envelope, and uh, what's outside that is uh, very much in question well and 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 i think what i'm what i'm saying is that i think fred is 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 frustrated with this intuitive uh understanding as a as an enthusiast that there is something wrong with what you've been telling us because 
this is back to um, uh, you, you. You might know the 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 Danish origin of uh, uh, of this uh, saying that uh, the, the 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 goblins will move with you. You can't really move away from uh, from hauntings of uh, or uh, infestations. How do you of say goblins. that in Danish? Just out of curiosity. Nissen flutter mill. Nissen flutter mill. Okay. It, it's <laughs> if you if you have this one floor, right? Then it will haunt you in everything else you start saying. And the bigger your science and your observations grow, if your original premise was slightly flawed, you can end up with potentially a lot of weird invisible flaws, right? So if we go back and talk about the things that many scientists have pointed out throughout history, right, in uh, astronomy and theoretical physics, well, if the speed of light is not a limitation in the universe. What does that mean? And how is that speed broken? And what will we then expect to be seeing, right? And the same with, um, I, I think I've mentioned this before. My beef personally is that I feel like astronomers are doing something almost hilariously funny. They're, they are like if aliens came to Earth and they looked at all the humans and all the humans family photos and stuff and they assumed that instead of it being a human being coming out of something and then growing that it's individuals and then wondering where they went like wh where did the five-year-old uh steven go i have pictures of him okay well wh one of the things i was uh, going to to ask is or suggest is, you know, Fred, what would really work for you, I think, is you've done, and you've done a lot of observations, and I can see you've done decades of, of observations, is um, what impresses me is if you can make a prediction of what something that we don't know yet that you can point to and say, I predict that this is going to be so or at or and or you know if there's something you can do that would be in a laboratory experiment that you could point to and say this is what you see here is what's going on uh out there sort of, I it, just sort of did that. if Jakob was paying attention i just did that well, you you kind of did in the, in the sense that you said something very similar to what one of the Electric Universe guys have said, right? When observing, when having observations of uh, globular-like uh, baby galaxies actually being blown out of either really large uh, um, qua uh, quasar-like uh, objects or um, actual uh, spiral galaxies, right? We've seen this phenomenon before and it has been pointed out that that thing if you check out the actual redshift is something coming out of another galaxy and it's not because it's moving in a specific uh, way it's the thing is younger it's uh, uh heat uh, stage is uh, at a different uh, uh again cosmogenic uh state in uh, in galaxies right and, and it's this whole thing that because they are so stuck in this, it is a variation on the stellar disk uh, way of forming things. They they don't seem, I, I don't like just bashing on, on astronomers uh, like crazy. Because well, do. there's a lot of these uh, things out there. There's a lot of the observations. There's a lot of people that are saying something very similar to this. That and, well, what are, I think, what I, what I think differentiates with what, uh, what Fred is saying is that there is a point where there's this very strong concentration of uh, of quite cool matter of what you call the mother rock, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what I would be interested in is uh, is I don't know anything about this. You know, I've seen lots of pictures of galaxies and stuff. But um, what you're proposing is interesting. Um, what I would like to know, what in a terms of presentation, is uh, you know, 
Is there particular things that differentiate that from the standard models that you see where you can say this temperature here is unexpected? This is not what you would expect to see. This is not the logical progression of, of what we see in our presumed uh, physics uh, of today. And you can see it again in this location and again in this location. Uh, uh, that would be, uh, I think that would be more of a clincher for you uh, in terms of, you know, solidifying the, the, uh, the idea. I, I find it, I'm intrigued. I'm really curious. Um, uh, I never thought of it like that before. And uh, I'm, well, and I don't think, whole, uh, contrary to what it. Jakob is saying, I, I don't think he, he's, uh, I don't think he's ever heard of the Mother Rock, except maybe at a, at a concert. Um, um, yeah. And the same with, me, same with me, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting and intriguing idea. Um, Have I ran into that problem. Somebody told me I was going to run up against people who were going to say, oh, well, they don't like that name or they think it's a funny name or something. But it was actually, somebody said, oh, it sounds like a new band. I'm going, no, it was actually a tribute to Hout Narp that I kept the Mother Rock part. Oh, is that uh, right? The part was named by somebody else. What was the, uh, what's the attribution to uh, Hout Narp? What, where, what link is that? The, his work? I, I emailed him. He started emailing me back, and we worked back and forth. He had some problems with his ideas of how the quasars were coming from the middle of a galaxy, what was causing this. And uh, he... What they were studying was plasmoids, you know, drop of plasma coming out the center of galaxies at the same time. And when I told him it was a solid rock, well, after about five years, he agreed with me. It may be a solid rock we're working with. You know, uh, Fred, one of the things that strikes me where it could be real helpful to you is, uh, you know, I'm a year older than you. And, like, uh, and I'm not any more intelligent than you are. Um I think you could really benefit from, uh, uh, you know, it used to be that if you wanted to do something on video, you, you had to have a white coat and a clipboard, you know, and a bunch of experts around you and you had a lifetime's experience. You know, there are there are video editing systems. And of course, you have a pretty a good idea of that already. Like uh, you should have those, for instance, the, those letters you've got between uh, the exchange between between you and Halton R, absolutely fascinating, uh, and you know that would be really great if that could be made very obvious and readable to. Can you pull, um, up, Facebook? Can you pull up Facebook while you're there? Yeah, sure. Because I've got all that on my page on Facebook. Why are you doing that? I got a question for Jakob. About, uh, I saw his videos about the egg. Yes, uh, when we were talking about, uh, uh, topology, yes. Yeah, topology. Mm -hmm. Those eggs you have, picture in your mind, just a little bit of stretch here, that the solid areas are hollow, and the hollow areas are the solid. I mean, in other words, just reverse the idea here. Oh, I'm I'm, ve I'm very much a much a fan of 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 that whole inversion thing, and I think it, okay. it, it's something because that... that's what that is what space looks like. You described it exactly, topologically speaking, because it is. If you saw the hollow areas in that egg as the solid areas, electromagnetic fields surrounding the galaxies, and the outside of the egg as separate, you see the idea there. You have the same amount of area inside as you do outside, yes. but all the galaxies and electromagnetic fields are interconnected, almost like a giant intestine. There's a picture coming up right there. Can you see that picture of the cosmic background? Uh-huh. The Take that picture, put it up next to your egg, and reverse it. That is exactly what your egg does, topologically speaking. It yeah, describes yeah. space in two areas. Inside the pink is where the galaxies are. The bright again, red spot right there. Well, we've touched it. We touched upon this, uh, or tried to touch upon this before, right? When it comes to the nature of how 
uh, super clusters, mega clusters, uh, local clusters, all this stuff, it all behaves in a fractal way, right? So this is why uh, Stephen says, uh, as above, so below, right? Whether you are yeah. looking at cloud formations yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or you're looking at your little uh, plasma ball in uh, in your study, or you're looking at galaxies or human brains or whatever, they, they all mm, regress to the same mm, type of pattern behavior. And so so there's there's nothing new under the sun. It's not that... It's just that we are noticing that there are okay. similar things okay. uh, happening. I'm not, and, and I'm it's not because... presenting anything new. Well, it, and, and I'm it's not be... presenting anything new. Everything I'm laying here is well-established, yeah. well-known. We've gone over all of it. All yeah, I'm, I'm, doing... I'm just saying that the reason that, that scientists sometimes prefer to omit these parts of their models is because the more variables you're trying to work with, the the more unpredictable your system becomes right so exactly. so they might not really want to talk about how there's also these mega structures or microstructures in the the isolated system that they want to talk about or the model hold, that hold, they hold want on, to build hold that picture right there sure see that picture right there where the uh, one on the left is gravitationally lens yeah on the right i have a picture of a ripple on the water yeah, that? yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Is that galaxy on the left is on an invisible layer of negative energy, electricity, that is rippling. And what you're seeing is a distorted reflection of an image. That's not even real what you're looking at. It's a distorted right. reflection. The two bright spots beside it, either side, those are reflections. I bring up a picture of the Milky Way. 90% of the stars surrounding the Milky Way are like a room full of mirrors, the reflections of each other. And then we have the uh, Mother Rock. Yeah, I'll go through the Mother Rock. Yeah. We Basically, what I have here is a picture of scalability. I take you to the mechanism yeah. that builds galaxy, and I take you all the way down. There you go, right there. There's your topology. There's the areas of space inside Magnetic field, electromagnetic field, area outside. Now, the cosmic background radiation, 1.7K. You look on the yeah. front of Jeffrey Burbage. I met Jeffrey Burbage in 2008. Went to his office in San in La Jolla, California, and shook hands with him, told him about the Mother Rock. Didn't really have a chance to talk long. But on the front of Burbage's page in his book, it says the amount of energy used to convert hydrogen into helium and back and forth again is the same as the temperature of the cosmic background. So that temperature, that cosmic background buzz going on is actually the conversion of hydrogen into antimatter as it passes through the bubble. You know, initially the uh, background radiation, the predictions um, were wildly the different point. when they before the uh, Bell uh, the Bell incident, where they sort of uh, couldn't find, figure out, they thought it was pigeons shitting on the on the device that created that. Uh, they didn't really know, and the theories varied greatly uh, in terms of what the background radiation was from as far as far from. Now I've not been able to substantiate this part, but from 50 degrees Kelvin, and then all the way back to two degrees Kelvin, and the most commonly uh, expected one. It was um, uh, was uh, like four degrees, four degrees Kelvin. So when they finally found out that so they it was a two degrees uh, Kelvin background radiation, they adjusted the theory uh, to fit the uh, the to match uh, the uh, the temperature. They went see. It fits. Can I just can I just point out, Stephen, what? that yes, it's worth yeah. mentioning that uh, not only did pigeons uh, shit in in that experiment, they also did it with uh, one of the early uh, Higgs uh, boson detection uh, attempts. That was also pigeons uh, shitting in the machinery. Um, so I'm just asking the important question here: 
what is it with pigeons trying to mess with our science? <laughs> to blame them. Not only that one, not, uh, there was another one. An astronomer in the University of Minnesota, the first one that discovered a large area of no radiation. He had oh, a yes. Student, he had a student. This was, uh, I remember this. I got a copy of the news article, and they ostracized him within three days. They said, oh, the very large area, the millimeter area down in New Mexico, it had pigeon shit on the fucking had I dish. Again? It did the same thing to him. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, all the time. So, Jakob, are you suggesting we need to exterminate the pigeon population? No, no, I'm saying that we need to pay very close attention to. If you are doing a meaningful experiment, it's a little bit like when you have a dog and when you go to the kitchen and you start messing with things and then it shows more and more interest. I think it's the same with pigeons. If the pigeons start showing an interest in what you are doing, you're on the right track. <laughs> you know, That's good. You know, uh, um, you're uh, pissing off the right people. Mm -hmm. Same thing, just a little bit yeah. more on a cosmological uh, scale. I think that's uh, what... I was, uh, 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 before you came on, Jakob, I was uh, commenting on uh, the fact that uh, all the science journalists, you know, like... Uh, when when the deep field is discovered in all these galaxies that are there, you know they don't run to the people, the heretics, and say, "You guys have been saying this. Why have you been saying this for so long?" They don't do that. They run to the guys who were wrong, and and say, "You know, well, what what could it be?" <laughs> well, you this guys is where I like I, I like to get a little bit political, right? It's the same as if the planet has had. Uh, or, or humankind has had the ability to do abundance uh, economy about since the 50s, 60s, if we limited our consumption, well, then we wouldn't have any need for wars anymore. But we can't have that if we have a, a military-industrial complex that needs to produce a lot of weapons and sell them to people. And I think it's the same with, with cosmology. Think of all the scientific projects on a... Mm, hundreds of millions scale, right? Especially things like the fusion attempts and uh, all the their, their uh, incessant tokamaks and uh, the Large Hadron Collider and all of these machines, right? If, if suddenly they start discovering that their whole model is so flawed that we need to rebuild it, that's like uh, when you find a bug in... Uh, uh, in in your uh, MRI machine and you need to take it all apart and reassemble it. That's an expensive thing. If we can just put a patch on it and then not see that it's making mistakes, let's just ignore it. Yeah, and if it continues to be, I think uh, it, the patch may work until 30 years later you discovered that that, that little blemish is really important. Indeed. Um, uh, no, it's sort of of the logic. Uh, it's sort of the logic of the, um, you know, we we need to stop eating uh, cows uh, because it's wrong. You know, the argument you can give to that as well. You know, if we if we stop eating cows, what's the purpose of cows from a human perspective? Uh, so they would go extinct. <laughs> You know, we well, let, let, let's let's just anymore. say that this is a this is a Yellowstone analogy that you're coming up with right now. Um, wait, 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 wait! What's a Yellowstone analogy? Well, they, when 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 they reintroduced wolves to Yellowstone, the entire oh, ecosystem oh, yes. changed, right? The interesting yeah. part here is wolves, right? So, if you asked uh, in a zoo, so what's the purpose of cows? I think a lot of the predators would hands and paw up and say to eat, <laughs> right? But from a planetary point of view, it's actually more its function is to actually make grass, right? And and manage the 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 the, the grassland and limit the forest, right? But the the point is that what might be true from one perspective is not true from another. So it's not necessarily that that we need to stop eating cows. It's that we may need to pay attention to the fact that cows as grazers has a function on the actual planet and the ecosystem. And if we keep killing them, and if we keep penning them in, well, when they're built to actually move when with the grass and like your lawnmower. Well, I mean like move. 
move yes exactly <laughs> it, it it it's one of those things that that we we tend to 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 repeat our mistakes like that Einstein's yes, it, definition of, yeah. of of insanity right we keep well we are an insane it. we are an insane uh, species I, I just don't like uh, point uh, I don't like calling it insanity I, I I want to compare it a little bit to you know when you do the Skinner box experiments and you teach uh, the pigeons we're back to the pigeons right when you teach uh, pigeons to to peck at a certain point and then give it food well if you remove uh, the food source, that does not mean that it's going to stop pecking. And if you change the conditions, it's still going to still going to do the same thing that it was positively reinforced to do. And it's the same with humans. If if we think that something works like this, we keep assuming the same thing and making the same models and 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 all of that. And it takes a long time to break that habit, right? I think we've talked about plate tectonics uh, before, right? This was a hypothesis long before uh, that nice uh, naval woman uh, collected the data uh, from the transatlantic ridge and actually right. gave us the data so someone could prove that plate tectonics, uh, sub subduction, and all of that stuff was actually happening. So now and the, we had a model. Uh, uh, that and the irony, explain. if I may interject, the irony is that uh, that search wasn't at all for plate uh, for the plate tectonics. It exactly, was for, it was not for it Russian was, submarines. It was for, it was for submarines and stuff. And it's but it's again. Th then we end up with the proof and the missing piece of a puzzle to to be able to actually claim something that before that was considered bunk and junk science, right? And and it's been a repeating pattern. Right there. It, it's such a repeating pattern in, in science, right? We, we've we talked about the fact that mm, way back in the day, uh, the origin of gravity mm, was discussed and we had things like uh, uh, Lesage uh, particles. And well, then the models that we use say, well, that can't be it because the particles that we know, that would mean that the entire thing would just keep heating up and that's not what we're observing. So that can't be it. Well, at that point, we didn't know about all the other particles and uh, and all the other mm, fundamental structures of the universe, right? So maybe we should revisit that with the new discoveries, but science is so stubborn and likes to stick in their current lane and it takes a as i said to you steven so many times it takes necessity before people change they will not change unless they have a utility or a necessity um yeah uh, or when the uh when the observations uh, so overwhelming. No, because no, no, you, 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 no, you no, 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 you can't ignore of. I mean, you, they there are lies, them. There lies the realm of madness. If we, you know, we sit on a tentative pedestal of uh, this loose agreement that we call objectivity, and uh, it's it's a fiction, really. There really is only subjectivity. Objectivity is a is a um, structure that we have designed in order to survive and to a large degree not kill each other, but it also spreads out into the sciences uh, as well. And it's the only tool we really have other than, um, you know, if you want to go into faith, uh, you can do that, which, uh, you know, um, if, if I had to lay money down on what's most practical and useful i would go with the i would go with the objectivity uh because even for all its faults it's it, it's something so getting back to fred and what fred is is suggesting is something that uh, i'm going to keep it on mind i'm going to look into what i want what i'd like to see fred is, is if you can what i can't see enough of is the mother rock thing uh, i you know the the blurred photographs which is not your fault it's the fact that there's so little information about it but if you can tell me more about what the temperature of that is because we should be able to see that uh, at that point unless it's surrounded which often happens by something brighter and hotter in which case it's hidden 
Absolutely, that's a possibility. But what I would strive for I is, ran, is probably is, surrounded by water and ice. Say that again, Fred. It's surrounded by water. It's surrounded by water and ice. So that every planet that comes off this, every moon, is coated with a layer of ice. The Earth had a coating of ice probably fifty to seventy miles miles thick when it came off this. Yeah, planet. that's pretty reasonable. It looks like a. A lot of the planets we've visited, especially in the outer belt, the moons of the outer belt, yeah, there's a lot of ice out there. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, and, you know, and, is... and a lot of water, apparently, if you look at Europa uh, and the, yeah. the uh, you know, apparently it does, it, it has the, uh, the, um, the flatness, if you'll apologize to uh, Jakob, the flatness of Denmark or, or Holland would be more appropriate. Denmark actually has a point that's 200 meters above sea level. <laughs> Solbjerg, isn't that correct, uh, Jakob? Oh, it is. And and let's let's not uh, <coughs> conflate the two, right? Uh, Holland was uh, raised from water uh, manually yeah. by humans. At least Denmark right, okay. appeared yeah. by itself that yeah. flat. Uh, Denmark was shaped... Uh, according to most Danes, by God. <laughs> here's, 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 Steve, okay. here's the problem with what I have. What I have is saying that astronomers have been wrong from the very start. Everything they have, everything, the astrophysics, astro astronomy, none of it means anything. The light years that they're supposed to travel, the distances, what the things are composed of, the Hart's big Russell diagram of stars in their lifetime, it's all bullshit. Mm -hmm. expanding of space there is no expansion of space it is infinite the way it is there you is know no beginning... uh, you, you mentioned uh, you mentioned the Hertzsprung Russell, uh, Russell diagram uh, many, back in the 80s uh, I got published in science uh, uh, science news um, I took the Russell Hertzsprung diagram you know it's temperature you know um, uh, temperature of stars to um, luminosity and uh uh, I drew, I made this little story. Uh, said there's an umpire, there's an umpire standing in a stadium, and he has a wart on his nose. And the wart's really intelligent. And what it does is it looks at the uh, all the people in the stadium, and it looks at their blood pressure and their heartbeat, and it determines from this that it's discovered the evolution of of these beings out there. But in fact. All it's managed to measure is the temporary excitement or boredom uh, of the uh, of the people in the stadium, and so the Hertzsprung Russell diagram, you know, it, it's an interesting uh, an interesting graph, but uh, you know, I would uh, I would definitely not take it as rote. Um, I, I think that it's you know, it's just it's a, as the Danes say, Danes have a great saying, "Sermande." There is no English translation for this. It means one sees this, you know. Well, what do you know? <laughs> you know, but it does sort of like a very, very sort of vapid, uh, what a wonderful expression, Jacob. I really like that. See a man did. Well, but, 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 it, but it, a subjective way of looking at it. But but it's back to the same problem, right? If if you walk through a forest, right, for the first time, I am pretty sure that most people don't see any trees growing. Right, and yeah. and 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 if your existence, so you're frozen. What you're saying, uh, uh, Jakob, is we're sort of frozen in a in a in a time, uh, and the, it makes us uh, it the, makes the, us the, see things in a certain way. The the actual developments, growth, evolutions are so different in scale that you might not yet make the connection. So uh, that's why I think yeah, Fred yeah. Is, is is stumbling on again is this thing that it is not like um, in the old days they, they, they have this, well, these galaxies are different types of galaxies that's formed by different types of material and different uh, locations. And that's why they have these different ch shapes and different compositions. And it's the same with our local uh, solar envelope, right? These uh, planets have all formed from different materials and at different distances, and that's why they are the way they are. And what I think more and more uh, astronomers, too, are, are starting to realize, and I think Fred is stumbling on, is this thing that, no, 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 this is like your family photo album. 
This is this is Galaxy at 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 two hundred million. This is Galaxy at five hundred million. This is yeah. Galaxy at five billion, and and so on and so forth. It's it's developmental ages, and then some uh, astronomers still want to uh, force this into this uh, chart, like your baby's growth chart. And it's like, not all kids fall on that growth chart. Yeah. Some of them are yeah. going to be slight outliers because of the thing that you actually argued earlier, the different conditions, right? So so you will have slight variations. And when you look at it, you can actually see it. You can see the the developmental thing from from what what I call no glow state, which is what I think Fred is on about with his uh, rock. That it's like you have this state where the material has not sea pinched yet, right? It's not, it's not, it's not like turned on and glowing mm, a lot yet. Because all, all, of, all of these, all of these stars and, and and stuff are not glowing enough yet. This requires this inversion uh, state where. Um, it it is seen a lot in in nature. It it's when something flips, right? So yeah, like turning this turning cream into butter. Exactly, and 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 it, yeah. uh, and, and it is a, an instant that it seems to be doing this at right. And and when it does that, now you have a glowing galaxy. But what you had before was the matter in a very low glow or no glow state. So it's not it, the the motherfucker's not on yet. And and it's um, the same with with the with with, with the the formation. Exactly. Of, of I just want to stuff, say right? uh, I want to conclude. We've been uh, we've been uh, about close on an hour and a half. Uh, I th I thought we would end up with uh, Fred. Why don't you give us a uh, a summary and conclusion and, and where you want to go with this uh, as a, a as a uh, uh, a finale for us? Okay. This is, uh, I was listening to Chris talking with y'all last time, and he used the word holistic as opposed to holographic. This is not only a, uh electric plasma universe, it is also holograms. I have a video on there with uh, Dr. Robert Jackpath where he described uh, reflection of an image out in space as if on a shell. But it's not just one shell, it's multiple shells, one after another after another. Now, I take you all the way from that, down through stars, through planets, show you how they all work the same electromagnetic field of two hemispheres, and take you all through life and how it comes from everywhere, down to the atom itself. And I show you a picture of the atom that operates the same way as a planet, a star, and a mother rock. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, I think that um, the, the, the idea of a, of a, a cosmos that just flows from the macro to the micro and and onwards and onwards and onwards. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a pity the Bible sort of sort of begins with uh, in the beginning. It's like, oh yeah, a big bang. But then at the very end of the Bible, you know, uh, or the the end of the Lord's Prayer, it says, "Forever and ever, Amen." I mean, well, which but, one do you want to use? <laughs> but but if, if I can just interject with uh, with my uh, personal last thing. It, it's again very much about our limitation as humans of of what we can understand not just about very fast yes. time and very deep time but also about dimensionality and higher dimensionality and how these things develop and progress if you take something very similar every one of us in this room if asked can sit down and do what is fundamentally the simplest uh fractal possible right which is basically bifurcation trees so one splits to two, splits to two, or one splits to three, splits to three, and so on and so forth. We can all do that in a 2D system, right? That's not complicated. But if you asked us to do the same with a three-dimensional and moving and developing in time bifurcation, then you would have to start taking a lot of new factors into uh, account, right? You would say, how, how does the split happen? Does it spin? And now you start getting the equivalent to an actual tree. Go out and look at a tree and look up, right? That is your bifurcation in three dimensions with things like spin, rotation, uh, and 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 speed of, of, of progression, right? You've got more vectors to deal with. Now, if I asked you to do the reverse, which is a reverse bifurcation, right? 
there's a fun experiment you can do at home if you take something like a non-Newtonian fluid-like thing, like toothpaste or something like that, and you put it between two plates and you pull them apart. What you get then is this weird fractal pattern. It's very well known by painters when they do dabbing on, on canvas, right? You get this weird tree that appears like, what is that? Well, that is basically a reverse bifurcation uh, where it, it's from the outside that it then mm, creates this pattern that then becomes fractal. Now think of your universe and your black hole doing that at the beginning of time. What now beginning? Well, or it, the beginning of its existence, because it doesn't make okay. sense to really talk about time. Yeah, but I the mean, effect, yeah. The effect uh, is you, that you get this 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 hyperstructure. The of, of the of, you get yeah, this in, hyperstructure, in a way, right? Yeah, you could you could say, you know, we are worms that are talking about the theory of where the dead leaf is that we can consume. And meanwhile, there's an entire universe going on that we're utterly unaware of. Uh, and we have to live within that confine. There, there's maybe we can understand. I think maybe what we're looking at, both for you, Jakob, and for Fred and for me, is is, 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 there, a, is there a thread that runs well, through it all? But that that's what can... I'm trying to get to, right? Yes, it, yes, right. Is that uh, when, you're, when you are that ant climbing that tree, you start having maybe an idea of what the tree is doing and how that tree growth actually works. Because you are seeing these patterns. You are seeing uh, the the pine cones. You're seeing the pine needle. You're seeing them from different angles at the dis distances. And you see some of them very, very close by and stuff. But because of your limited perspective, you never really get the full picture. Right. So right. you don't know what a forest looks like. Right. And 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 then you get all the problems that Fred was was uh, uh, giving uh, us attention to. The whole thing of what about all these kaleidoscopic? It's not just stop saying that it's just gravitational lensing in this nice fixed matter. Uh, because well, gravity. You you guys keep talking about gravitational waves and shit. Then you can't say that these things are still. That means that you got ripples. And and if you look at the bottom of a swimming pool, you know that this stuff is not simple. If you have no, to, yeah, you, you have, have to, to go backwards. You have to remember that the thing about the gravitational lensing is a little bit like the rainbow. If you move to another section of uh, of uh, uh, of the universe and look at the same object, that gravitational lensing will still be there, seen from a different point of view. I mean, exactly. it, it's uh, it's like it's not two dimensional. Uh, or, you know, it's uh, it's well, it's actually three and fourth dimensional, but you know. Uh, you could go down the rabbit hole right now. I want to conclude. We're running out of time, Jakob. I want to. I want to conclude this. Fred, uh, final words, uh, and we can keep talking. I just need to. Uh, I need to the limit video, the yeah. uh, the uh, video. Uh, final words, Fred. All I can say, what I have, is not something you're going to learn or be able to. Think about you're not going to learn this in one day or two days or three days. I've worked with college professors who looked at this and said, This is an entire year's worth of college course in this. What he was talking about plants and the pine cones, all this and that. I can take you through each and every one of those examples and show you the governing dynamics behind it and electromagnetic field and how it produces those results. And uh, with testable theories, with testable ideas, I can show you. You asked about predictions. I predicted rogue stars eight years before they had discovered them. I predicted the mother rock. Look at the, that picture that I showed you of the mother rock in the center of the galaxy. I drew that picture 20 years ago. I okay. had 20 years of predictions that came true as I was doing them. And when I got down to the atom and I found, uh, well, you, you showed it right there in that, in that drawing. I had the picture from the collider, an atom of a an explosion and right below it you see my drawing of what I think the atom is inside because every atom has a north and south pole I will so when, when we coming... when we create this uh, video I'll have all the links that uh, that you've given me and whatever else you uh, you want to put in there I'll put that in the uh, below the uh, the video section Brett so that people that can follow you and go 
further than we have in this pathetic uh, hour and 20 minutes. Um, probably, I want, the problem with doing it this way is you don't have time to get into depth. You start getting that the stuck truth? Yeah. the rest. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we can, uh, this isn't the end. If you find that you've got more that's come up, oh, yeah, and wave yeah. your hand wildly in the air and we'll do, uh, we'll do a, a, an additional uh, uh, interview. Um, I want yeah. to thank you, Fred, for coming, for coming along and, and Jakob for doing this. We can keep talking. I'm just sort of closing up and um, uh, I, we hope to have... I thought um, I'm probably kind of good too, but Jakob said something I want to talk to. Him, he said something that makes sense. That's why we're going to I've continue been... after after yeah. I sw switch off the video. So for everybody else out there, thanks for listening and watching, and I hope to see you again soon.